Um, hey, Bill, I need some advice about what a girl did to me. What this fucking broad did to me over here. Uh, you see, this person says, okay, so I started talking to this girl and we hung out. And you know what? We had some fun. She's beautiful. She has a great personality. FYI, what pisses me off is the way she led me on by telling me how lucky she was to have met me and all this other bullshit. So I started to fall for this broad over there. Uh, she's the first girl that I ever fell in love with. Uh, this is way... Oh, wait. This is, she's the first girl that I ever felt this, this way before. Now, is that me or him? She's the first girl that I ever felt this way before. No, that's him. And it's both our first year in college. So out of fucking nowhere, she tells me that she's got a fucking boyfriend, which got me fucking mad. The guy's dropping the F-bomb. I'm, I'm believing it here. So my question is, why did she lead me on just to drop me for some other fucker? Uh, is this guy Mexican? For some other fucker? Uh, I'm stupid because I still like her. Set me straight, Bill, and tell me what you would do in that situation and if that ever happened to you before. Thanks. Um, oh, Jesus. Did it ever happen? Oh, absolutely. I've been both of those people. <laughs> I've been the douche, and I've been you. Um... All right, let's see here. Why did she do that? Because she's young. You're both young. Let her go, man. She could have she done it. What could have happened to you is so much worse, okay? She could have, uh, I don't know. You could have married her, had a couple of kids with her, and then, then you find out that she wants to be with somebody else. That could have happened. You got off easy. You're young. You're in the prime of your fucking life, you know? You're in your first year of college, dude. You're, you're a number one draft pick. You got your whole life ahead of you. You know? I mean, like, like the level of fucking ass that you could be banging right now just out of she, she, the, the sheer potential that your life still has. And what's great about it, your age, you don't really have to prove anything. All you have to do is be majoring in something that sounds like there's a bunch of cash at the end of the rainbow. You tell a fucking couple jokes, you're in there. Okay? So whatever. You know, look, here's one way to look at it. You know, you got, let's just say that she isn't just young and immature because that's what that sounds like. Um, that's, that's best case scenario. She might be an absolute psycho, at which point you totally got off easy because uh, she's out of your life. So what I would do is uh, what I always say. This is what you want to do. Next time you see her, you're going to look great because you're going to go to the gym. You're going to get fucking jacked, all right? You're going to get in the best shape of your fucking life, and you're going to start hitting on ass fucking two, three levels above her. And one of them's going to say yes. It's a law of averages. And then someday you'll run into her and be like, would you look at that fucking broken down hunk of shit that I actually was worried about? You know, now look at me. And I'm not saying this new girl isn't going to crush you too. <laughs> That's, that was bad for me to say that. I'm going to get you to the point where you, you can't trust people. But, uh, you know, so it's a it's one of the uh, one of the growing pains of finding, finding whoever the fuck you're supposed to be with, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. I'm sorry she did that to you. It sucks. Um, I have had that happen to me. I was uh, – how can I tell this story without getting anybody in trouble? Um, it was one of my earlier relationships. Uh, this woman was a musician. She was a lot older than I was. And she was in a band, uh, and there was another dude in the band who was married to another chick that was in the band. And, um, you know, she quit her day job and started spending a lot of time over this guy's house writing. I'm doing the air quotes right now. Writing. Working on music. Writing. <laughs> uh, the dude's wife was getting upset was saying, I don't like you spending all this time with this other woman. He said, it's innocent. We're just writing. We're over here writing. And um, my girl came home to me and said she was upset that this other broad would ever think that, oh, my God, how the fuck, you know, uh, that, that she would ever do something like that. She's like, I would never do something like that. I love the guy, but as a friend, I'm just over there writing. <laughs> long story short 
me and this woman break up. I start a comedy career, and about a year and a half later, I'm doing a show. And uh, who comes up to who comes up to me at the end of the show? The wife of the guy that my old girlfriend was writing with. And I say, good to see you. She's like, yeah, I can't believe you're doing comedy. That's awesome. I'm like, yeah, it's great to see you and all that type of shit. And I was like, hey, where's so-and-so? And And she goes, oh, she's with your your ex-girlfriend now. And I was just like, Jesus Christ. And uh, I realized that they probably were not writing when we were dating. And I would love to tell you that I only had one of those stories, but I, I had a number of those. I had like uh, I had like three women that I know of that did that, you know. And then I fucked around too in relationships. So I mean, what are you gonna do? Well, you give some, you take some. What are you gonna do? It happens. It happens. People, human beings, they fuck up. They make mistakes, you know. But you got off easy. You got off easy. Jesus Christ! I told you that fucking story, didn't I? I know I told this one before that time. I, I, oh, my God. That was right when I knew I was going to be a comic. I was, I went to one of her shows, and they were in this band. I can't say the name of the band. All right? I'm not trying to get anybody in trouble, but they made these sweatshirts for the band that they were selling after the show, and they were all white. And they said the name of the band in, like, this Miami Vice pastel. Okay? And it's the early 90s, so the pastel look is fucking at least, I mean, that was mid-80s. This is early 90s. So they're going to sell these after the show. And the woman I was dating said she wanted me to wear the sweatshirt during their fucking show. And I was, everything in me was screaming, going, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. But for some reason, I was at that age, I was, I was afraid of having a confrontation um, and I, I fucking did it anyways. I sat in the crowd at their fucking show. They had an outdoor show during the day, and I sat there with a sweatshirt on, written in pastel with the name of their band. Ugh. I, you know, it's unfucking believe. Why didn't I just say, that was so much of my adult life was learning to just say, no, I don't want to do this. Um, you know, cause I, I had like more of a, uh, you know, my childhood upbringing was, Hey, sit down and shut the fuck up. You know, when that is like the communication that is going on as you're growing up, like you will find yourself sitting at a show wearing <laughs> a sweatshirt with pastel writing on it. And not knowing that you have all the power to be like, I don't want to do this and take it off um, or just not put it on, you know, but I'm glad I didn't say no, because the only way I knew how to say no then was I really would have hurt her. I couldn't just say, listen, um, I'm not wearing it. It's too effeminate. Okay. Do you have any guy ones? You know, you got a black one in there with like, it's written in (laughs) something other than pink and aqua fucking blue all right i was kidding who if i if i really loved her i wouldn't wouldn't have had a problem if i was really comfortable with who i was i would have fucking i would have cut the sleeves off i would have tied it off right just fucking skip right down the aisle professing my love but i didn't love her so i don't give a shit that she banged that guy in the band good for her good on you lady from my life fucking 25 fucking years ago Oh, Jesus. That was an oh, Jesus one right there. That was another yet a the zillionth oh, Jesus moment in my life. Well, let me tell you, I had a rough one out there, you know. 